Hello, everybody. We are so happy that you are here today. Um, this is, I believe, our fourth. I think this is our fourth parent meeting, and so we are working our way through them. So we're grateful that you could come. I'm Dr. Jane Lindemann, and I'm the superintendent of the school district, and I'm happy to be your host today. And we have got one more person who's going to come up and help present. But uh, we were, are going to move through this fairly quickly. And so I do believe the meeting will be about 30 minutes. So you won't be here for the rest of the afternoon. We're going to move through really quickly. It's fun to see a student here. So thanks for coming. Um, you are here because we are moving through those first steps to unfolding the future for our eighth grade students as they go into high school. And I know it seems a little bit odd, especially if you haven't had somebody in um, high school yet. It feels a little bit odd to be here already because we just got started with the eighth grade school year and all of a sudden we're saying, ta-da, here we go. We're going to start thinking about high school. The reason we do these meetings now is really because the high school registration process is so critical, but it also takes a really long time. So for us to move um, you know, 3,000 students through the process and really give some personalized scheduling advice to students really takes the better part of four months. So if we start now, we can use all of this up through winter break, and then we can even go into January and February and kind of get our, um, our work done behind the scenes. And then we are able to push that button and get students scheduled a little bit earlier. Our goal is always to make sure that students can see their schedules by the end of the school year. Sometimes it's a little bit later, but we really tr do try to do that. That's why we're starting now. Um, if high school scheduling wasn't as important as it was or as it is, we might not you know, have these parent meetings. Um, we started these because we knew that you have to be part of the process and that high school, think of high school scheduling as that first step to everything to come. If we do it right, we can get kids in the right class, we can engage them at higher levels, and we can save parents a ton of money. And we can get kids kind of down a path that they can try out things while they're still under our roof. So thank you, parents, come on in. Um, will we get handouts? Can we get some handouts? All right, so what you're gonna learn today, we're really gonna, we're, I'm gonna just let you meet some of the staff. We actually have some staff here in person. I'm gonna show you uh, pictures of everybody, not that you'll remember them, but just to kind of get, you know, the brain kind of likes patterns, so hopefully you can kind of get a feel for who is available to help you after today. We're gonna talk about the registration process. We're going to um, understand high school opportunities. We're really gonna focus in on that. And then learn how you can help your students. We really want you to be able to um, be in that best position where you're armed with information to support your, your kids. Years ago, my understanding, I've been in the district for 17 years. It, my understanding is that like 20 years ago, we used to do these meetings pretty faithfully and we had high school registration meetings for parents, but then somehow we kind of fell away from those. So about eight years ago, seven, eight years ago, we, we resumed having these parent meetings and we're really glad to say that we have had about um, almost 100% of parents who come to these meetings say that it was worth their time. So we think it's really great. We think you've made a really good choice to be here. Um, and for those listening to the video, um, we think you made a really great choice to push that button and, and listen to this information. So um, let's, we think, you know, there's so many cho choices in high school. We believe that Waterloo Schools has more opportunity and more options than any other school district in the, I mean, in a hundred mile radius, really. The only district that might have as many options as Waterloo is, is Des Moines. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the work that we're doing on the Waterloo Career Center. And because of that work, we actually are, are bringing forward more options than anywhere else. We think parents need to get involved and we know you want to be involved. And if we can give this information to you earlier, you can have those conversations at home that will help your students steer them in the right direction. We believe high school paves the way to the all future careers. In Waterloo, um, our, our, the time that students serve with us or spend with us from K to 13, or after 13 years, K-12, um, we believe that that absolutely is, it, it matters and it should not be just about that high school diploma. It is not just about a high school diploma, even though sometimes people say, oh, I just want my diploma, I want my diploma so I can get on with the rest of my life. Everything that your students do with us is preparing them for life after. So it's, we want kids to graduate with a diploma and a plan. And we want them to use that time, that diploma, to be that springboard and to cut some time off of the, the, um, the classes that they might need later to prepare them. So, and we think you can save thousands of dollars and who's not up for that, right? Thousands of dollars you can, you can uh, save. What did we save for our graduating class? Uh, 
$1.3 Yeah, $1.3 million our senior class saved in college tuition last year. That's, that's a big deal. So let's see who's, um, who you can use to, or who can answer questions for you. So we have administrators, we have some here, and I'm gonna point them out in a little bit, but really the biggest questions that you're, that you're if you have questions, the biggest helpers are gonna be our school administrators and our school counselors. That's really where you're gonna ask your questions. So we have, we have East, we have West, and we have um, Expo. And right now from, from, we have somebody here today, I think from most of the buildings representing. So from East we have, I saw Mr. Parker. So if you turn around and look at Mr. Parker is here with us. After this meeting is over, if you have any questions that would be best answered by an East administrator, Mr. Parker is your person. From West, we have Ms. Hildeman, so Mrs. Hildeman. Um, Ellie is here and she can answer any of your questions and she's right here, the rose among all the thorns, right? In the, in there. And then we have, um, from Expo, we have Mr. Wheeland over here and he's the head principal and so he's going to be able to answer any questions that you might have. We'll do that afterwards, we're gonna go through the presentation, but they are here to support you through this process. We also have counselors here, so you're kind of seeing the theme. Every building, all three high schools, have people represented here today. So let's see who we have from um, the East Trojans. I see Miss. Fon oh, we have two here, right? Okay, so we have um, Miss Fund. Fond Why can't I say your name right? Say it for me one more time. Fanua. 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 I've got to practice that. And she's a counselor. And then we also have um, Miss Prem. No. Yes. God. I'm getting that wrong too. Peach. Okay, so there we go. See, we put a video in front of me and then I can't remember anything. So we have two. two. Oh, and we have, there's, we have somebody here from Expo too. So if your question is best answered by an East High counselor, we have two here to support you today. From West, we have, we're in front of me. We have, right, we have um, Miss Houston, Miss Houston, and she will be able to help you with anything. And then from Expo, we have Miss Supreme. Okay, so there's people that are here today to answer your questions. Um, the, a note to the virtual, I don't know if we have anybody in here virtual, but I'm gonna answer it for the, okay, so I'm gonna answer it for, especially for the purpose of, of anybody who's watching this later. If we have students who are either in virtual instruction right now, um, or maybe not even part of Waterloo Schools, because every year we have somebody who attends the meetings and they are maybe from um, a private school system and they're coming back into the public school system, we will tackle scheduling very similarly to what we do to everybody else, but it will be more personalized. So we will work with families, possibly on the phone, possibly a virtual meeting, um, to get them scheduled for, get, get you scheduled for high school. So all you have to do is just call your middle school that your student would be attending and then ask to talk with a counselor and they will walk you through the process. And the same is for anybody who doesn't have kids in the Waterloo School System right now. If you are coming into the Waterloo School sy System, just call either any middle school or you can call down to the district office and we will set you up with a person who can help. All right, so. All right, I'm gonna spend the next couple of slides talking through the registration process. So here's what you need to know. I know there's a lot of, of typing, a lot of text on this, but here's what you really need to know. The part in yellow actually has to do with one part of the registration process, which is the student's freshman schedule. So that's one thing we're gonna do. Our goal is to get students to have a freshman schedule that makes sense for them and gets them that springboard to everything after. So we wanna choose really carefully what freshman classes students sign up for. The part in the white background is actually about a student's four year plan. So this actually is interesting because it's actually required by law that students have a four year plan. It's required by law and there's certain pieces that we do. For example, down here on number five, parents comment, sign and return the four-year plan. That's actually required by law. So if by chance you forget to sign it when it comes home in January, we will call you and we will ask for it back and we'll keep staying at, at that situation to make sure that we get all of them back because it's required by law. Parents have to sign off on a student's four-year plan. Okay, so let's look at what this is gonna look like. Back to the yellow. So again, this is just about the schedule for their freshman year. So we are gonna have the middle school counselors meet with students about the fresh, freshman schedules. Most of the schools have already gotten their program of studies and it looks like this. So it's a real thick book and it has every single class and a description of every class and it's really big. 
So most students have gotten this. Um, if they haven't, I think Hoover might be the only building that hasn't gotten it yet, but they will get it very shortly because their parent meeting is on Thursday night. So middle school counselors are gonna come in, they're gonna have their materials, they're gonna talk through what it is, and they're, they're gonna, they're, these are welcome to be taken home. We hope that they do. After that, we're gonna have the counselor, the high school counselors will come in and we'll also talk with the students about the courses, making sure that they understand everything that's available. And then the middle school uh, counselors, they're gonna do something really great for you as parents. They're going to sit down with your students individually and they're gonna have a conversation about what freshman classes would be the right ones for them. And it's gonna sound like this. Hey, tell me about what, you know, what, what might you wanna do when you graduate. Um, let's make sure that we get classes that get you in the classes that will kind of let you try that out, test it out. If you like it, you can continue on. If you don't like it, we'll try something else. And there are certain classes that they're going to need to take that are required. And of course, as freshmen, there's actually a lot of courses that are required. They don't have a ton of choice as a freshman, but they do have choice. So we wanna make sure that they choose wisely. Don't just grab classes and say, eh, can't think of anything better, we'll just take this one. High school scheduling is so important that it is the springboard for everything to come. And it can save you thousands of dollars if we take it seriously and we do it right, okay? Once that high school schedule is done, we will be asking parents to sign off on it. You can see that on the schedule. And then those schedules will come back to us. At that point in time, we start putting it in the system. All right, we've talked with your students, you've talked with your children, you've signed off, and then we start scheduling them. All right, so just a, a, a comment about the materials that are in front of you. Your students have this book, you do not get it today, but what you did get is something that I consider kind of a gold document. Would you pull out this trifold brochure? I love, love, love this because it has every single class in it that students can take. Um, and it, every class is listed. So in essence, this document and this document are exactly the same. The only difference is this is just titles, titles of classes. This has all of the descriptions of the, of the classes. And as you look through that brochure, one other thing I think I want you to notice is on the titles of courses, do you notice that some of them have a little asterisk beside it? Those are courses for freshmen. Those are the things that freshmen can take. So for example, in that very first section with art, you can see the, all of the list of classes that are offered in the art department, but only one, two, three of them has, have an asterisk behind it. Those are the ones that are available for uh, freshmen. Okay, that's how to read this document. So keep this with you. I would not, would not get rid of this. I would hang it up. I would put it in a place, an important place so that you can come back to it because it's a really great document. All right. And then the other thing that I would just draw your attention to since we're looking at this part, um, on the inside cover of this brochure, there's a list of all of the, the classes that students need to take to graduate. That is a school board policy. So no student can graduate without having these things accomplished, these credits earned. So in English, you're gonna see that all students have to have eight credits, which is eight semesters of English, and then, and so on. You can look at that list, and if you look, if you add all of that up, the, answer, the, um, the magic number is 44 credits. All students have to have 44 credits to complete their diploma and walk the stage right, to get handed their diploma. Down below it, there's one thing I'll just draw to your attention. It's, um, it talks about the honors diploma. Every year we have a, stu a few students who set their, heights, their sights really high and they say, I don't want just a diploma, I want to go for that honors diploma. If students want to try for the honors diploma, they have to take 53 credits, 44 needed to graduate, but you can exceed and go to uh, 53 credits. And if they do that, they can get an honors diploma. The only Caveat is that um, 10 of those credits have to be advanced courses, like high school or college courses. So you can read it in there that 10, they, we say either five year long courses or 10 semesters have to be um, advanced programming classes, okay? And if they can do those two things, get the 53 credits and fulfill 10 of those credits are advanced placement or advanced courses, they can get their honors diploma, which they are recognized at their high school graduation. All right, so that's how to use that particular document. All right, let's switch over to this. This part is the four-year plan. 
so we've got the, again, the high school counselors, when they come, they're gonna come in and they're gonna talk with students and they're gonna say, hey, let's, let's kind of plan out your four year um, career in the high school, right? Ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade. So they get the four year plan, the middle school counselors continue to work with them. Can you see the tandem work between the high school counselors and the middle school counselors? Back and forth, back and forth, working with the students to get both of those things done. Their freshman schedule and their four year plan. Again, that will be sent home, and the reason it's sent home is because, why? Why do we send it home for a signature? It's required, it's required by law. It is required by law. So you'll send that back, we will file it, and that's when we start scheduling the students. And if your brain likes just a list, this is what happens, it's the same information. Middle school counselors are gonna meet with them, the high school counselors are gonna meet with them, the middle school counselors are gonna swoop back in and start doing that planning with them, and once those three things happen, and we have not only a freshman schedule, but a four-year plan, then everything gets sent home, and then you sign it, and then we start scheduling. Okay, does that make sense? Pretty easy process. This is all starting now. It started last week, and it goes all the way through the middle of January. So it takes us a couple months to get through this part, and once we get all of those schedules back, then we start entering them in and building our master schedule. But it's really, really important, parents, that you look for that. Talk with your students, especially after you leave here today. Go home and ask your students, where's your book? What are you thinking? What kind of, what, what might you want to be? And let's see if we can find some courses to make that happen. Here's a sample of what a ninth grade schedule could look like. Not everybody will have everything in this particular order, but my point is, in the blue, those are all required courses. You can see that there's a lot of required courses for freshmen, but they do have some choices shown by electives in the white background. So every student will have to take, every freshman will have to take a year of English. They will have to take a year of math. And of course there's several classes within math that they can take. Every student has to take a year of science, a year of history, full year, fall and spring. Then they have to take a PE credit they will have to take that. Now, there is a possibility that students would have something that they would be exempted from PE. Um, they could be exempted, like maybe they're per perhaps in a, in a sport, that would count as their PE. So if they're taking sports, then they wouldn't have to do the PE credit, but that is a requirement, so one or the other. It either has to be exempted or they have to take PE. There's another course that is required for graduation and it's called C3 Foundations. And just so you know, the C3 actually comes from our Waterloo School's mission statement where we say that we want students to be career, college, and citizenship ready. So because we value those three things, there is one particular class all students have to take before they graduate. Some of your children may be taking C3 Foundations in eighth grade, some do. Most do not. Most of them take it their freshman year, and it's possible that they might not even take it until the summer after their freshman year. Um, I happen to have a ninth grader this year, and he could not fit C3 Foundations into his freshman year, so he's going to take it at the end of the year during the summer because he wanted to fill that slot with a different elective, okay? Lots of options. Talk with your counselors. We have lots of options, but you, students cannot graduate without C3 Foundations. And if they've taken it as an eighth grader, check mark, okay? Some, some do. Seminar is a required course both fall and spring. Um, think of it as a structured study hall help time. And I think I, we've used a, a seminar in a variety of ways. Maybe students need an extra help to get a particular concept. Perhaps they were absent for something. I had one of my kids got uh, some, some cruddy sickness this fall. He was gone for four days. When he came back, seminar was our, our only way out. I mean, it took us the better part of a couple weeks to get him caught up. We used seminar for all of that. If students need an expansion activity, if they need to meet with a teacher, that's, they're all available at that time. So seminar is a really good thing for them to do. And then again, they have these electives. This is the part I really want to push today. Those elective classes and your choices that you make with your students really matter. They really matter. What they choose for their electives as a ninth grader makes all the difference for what they can do their sophomore year, their junior year, and their senior year. So we wanna choose wisely and help them choose wisely. 
All right, so I'm gonna have Allie come up right now and I'm gonna have her talk a little bit about all of the options that we have for our, we have a lot, don't we, Allie? We have, I should call you Mrs. Hildeman on the video, right? Okay. All right, so I'm Allie Hildeman. I'm one of the assistant principals at West High School in Waterloo. Um, just to kind of let you guys know about some of the opportunities that we have at school, um, one of the mottos that we live by at West High is to get involved and to stay involved. So we have dozens and dozens of different clubs and activities. Um, and what you guys hear a lot about when you think about high schools um, across the state is you hear about the athletics, you hear about band, you hear about all those different opportunities. Um, we have JROTC at West High, we have the Air Force at East High, um, they have the Army. And so the, our cadets go back and forth uh, with the different schools, they collaborate together and they're really working to make sure that the students are involved and we're making Waterloo schools a better place. Um, on top of just the JROTCs um, and band, we have tons and tons of student run groups. Um, so if your student wants to get involved and they want to do something and you know there's nothing at school right now that they have, have them get a hold of one of the administrators or their teachers and we can start a student started staff sponsor club and that's at any of the schools. So we have staff that stay um, after school and they sponsor with our students whether they're looking at like nostalgic books and connecting them to videos or there we have a nerd club that meets after school and they're playing like Smash Brothers video games and doing things like that and then kind of connecting them back. So one of the things at West High that we really stick by is stay involved or get involved and stay involved. Um, we have a lot of our seniors as they go on to graduate at the end of their four years with us at West who say, I was involved my freshman year and then I stopped. I wish I would have stayed involved and I wish I would have continued to be active in our school community um, in order to make it a better place for everybody coming back in. Um, one thing to kind of to piggyback on off of what Dr. Lindemann said is she talked about the 44 credits it takes to graduate. Um, the magic number that we talk about with your students every single year is the number 11. So every year your students need to get 11 credits in order to be classified as, so if you're a freshman and you get 11 credits, then you go to be classified as a sophomore. Um, in middle schools and in elementaries, um, I know you guys get a lot of, you'll get the, like a retention letter and things like that. In high school, what happens is your, your child is just reclassified in the system. So when we look at infinite campus, um, instead of having, if it's your second year, instead of having a number 10 up in the corner of their infinite campus, it'll say a nine still until that they hit that magic number of 11 credits um, in order so then we can continue to keep track of our students as they make the, their path to the right 44 credits that they need to get. Yeah, so um, along with of those, the student-led groups and all of that stuff that we have, we have um, at each of the schools and is also at the WCC, we have e an eSports group. Um, I know East High just had a really successful run last year. I believe they were state champions. And then was going for it third this year. So then third this year. So they've done an awesome job of kind of building that. At West High, we have a link crew. So the first day with your freshmen, they'll come in and we um, do a freshman orientation with just the freshmen and just our junior and senior link crew leaders that then really get the kids accustomed to the buildings. Um, we have all different activities. Um, student Senate, another one to get involved with. Start your students talking about what you want, what they want to get involved in in high school, how they want to continue to be involved and work towards making whatever school that they go to a better place. Um, we talked about the athletics, um, the arts, the music, the theaters, the plays. There is an infinite amount of activities that your kids can take place in and they can really participate to make Waterloo schools better. Mm -hmm. All right, now just to point out, we have Ms. Hildeman here representing West High today, but that's just because we have so many parent groups, or we have so many meetings. This is our, like I mentioned, this is our fourth. So they've just traded off. So East High had a rep doing that for previous meetings, and so we have West today for, and happens to be the one that's being filmed today. But really, the, say, the message is there's something for everyone. And if, if your students look at the schedule and they don't find that, that specific thing that catches their interest, 
talk with the, the principals and come up with the, the, the example that was given at one of the other parent meetings is there was a group that came forward and they said, we just love old movies. We'd like to create this old movie club. And so they got a, they got a sponsor and so they stay after school and they watch all these nostalgic movies. What a, what a great interest. Now, that probably wouldn't have been my interest, but it was somebody's interest, right? Something for everyone. So that's the point. And students will be much more successful if they just get involved, get involved and stay involved. Okay, so we are kind of coming to the end. I only have two more things to share with you. This one is super important. It's the Waterloo Career Center um, concept that we have here. And again, remember when I said that Waterloo has more options than any other district? There's only one more school district in the state of Iowa, and it is Des Moines, that has this type of programming. So your students are in the right place at the right time because boy, are we gonna give them some opportunities. Um, we have, the, the Career Center started in 2016, and since that time, we just keep adding additional programs. You can see right now that we have 18 career pathway programs that your students can choose to take classes in. And here's the beauty of it. If they choose to take one of these, when they go to the Career Center, which is housed on Katowski, right on the, on the north end of Central Middle School, when they go there, they get high school credit, they get college credit and any of the exams or any of the certifications, they can sit for those while they're with us and we pay the cost of those. So if they wanna try out the nursing program and they need to get their CNA degree, they sit for their exam, we pay for it. If they're in the technology classes and they wanna take Cisco or A plus certification, we pay for it. If they're in any of the trades classes <clears throat> and they wanna take their, sit for the, and, and finish up their OSHA certification, which most students get after they graduate. Our students get that while they're here at no cost to parents. They can do their OSHA certification and they can do it while they're with us. So look at this document here. If students are interested in the trades, we currently have four pathway programs for them to pursue. They could do advanced manufacturing, electrical, plumbing, sustainable construction. Maybe they're interested in something with cooking or hospitality or human services. They can go into um, culinary or hospitality. Look at our bank of classes for the in, within technology. Digital graphics, they do mock-up lay, uh, layouts. Um, interactive media is what um, we call that program, but it's really audio video production. So if you think of your students and they love to create YouTube videos or they like to do something, this might be something and it's an actual career out there. So not only are they doing YouTube videos in your basement, they're actually turning it into something that could be a career down the road. Um, web and mobile networking. Networking has some components of cyber safety. So students, sometimes students are really interested in that hacking concept, like people hack into a network and there are certain people that are hired to make sure that that doesn't happen. We're teaching it, we're teaching it and it's an actual career. Look at all the nursing classes we have right here. Pre-nursing, biomedical lab technology, which is more of that research side. Right? Some people want to go into medicine, but they don't want to do, they don't want to work on the, on the floor. They want to do the research behind the scenes. We can get them started. Physical therapy. Maybe students want to be an athletic trainer. This is a great choice for them to get started in. Emergency management. And then you can see the, the finance things or the business classes. And then we have some things in early childhood and we have a K-12 teacher prep. I have known since I was very young that I wanted to be in education. I would have jumped on this pathway right here in a heartbeat had it been offered for me when I was in high school because that's what I wanted to do and I could have gotten some of my classes out of the way, high school credit, college credit, plus any exams that they need to take to get, um, get started in the profession, they can do it right when they're with us. And I would tell you a little selling point, our CNA program has the highest pass rate in the state of Iowa of any testing site anywhere in the state of Iowa. Waterloo schools, the students who take their CNA exam right here in our building, highest pass rate in the state of Iowa. So they're getting quality instruction and we're gonna make sure that they're successful. So I really hope that you will look at this. There are classes that are offered even as early as their freshman year that would be a great start to hear. If you go back to that little brochure that I mentioned, remember I said that was kind of gold? Let's say that a student wanted to do something up here in the advanced manufacturing wing or that, that in the trades. Um, if you look to the, at the industrial technology, which is on the inside of the cover, one of the classes you're gonna see is intro to technology, intro to metals. Some of those classes might be good choices for your freshmen to take.
because once they take that, remember, use that freshman year as a springboard, try out things, springboard for everything to come. All right, so here's just some pictures that I'm just showing you. I'm just gonna whiz through these quickly. When students go out there, it looks different. The Career Center looks different from East, West, and Expo. The classrooms look different. The equipment looks different. Um, when you, this is, whoop, that was advanced manufacturing. It looks different. It looks like the industry. Um, I'll just show you a couple more classes or a couple more um, things. Just remember the classes that you choose for ninth grade and beyond are critically important to everything afterwards, right? To accessing opportunities going forward. When I talk about the WCC looking differently, if you go into the medical unit and you wanna go into emergency management, do you know that we actually have an ambulance in the classroom? It's the back end of an ambulance, it doesn't have a motor, but the back end, and it's actually on a shock system. Why would it be important for us to teach students what it's like to be in the back of an ambulance that has a shock system on it? Why? Because they're gonna bounce all over when they're actually doing the job. We try to make it as real as possible. That, what, that equipment is not cheap, but it's really important for our students to get to experience what that looks like, all right? So everything that's in there gives them that, lets them get started on the careers. Okay, so that's all. I hope that I've sold you on the Career Center that your students really need to take advantage of that. There are four blocks offered for your students and typically freshmen are not gonna have enough, credit and have enough room in their schedule to go out to the Career Center, but their sophomore year they will. So when we talk about that four-year plan, ask your students, how soon can they get out to the Career Center? Their sophomore year, they probably can get there. If not their sophomore year, their junior year. It's a little harder when students, if they take um, a year of band, that's gonna fill up that elective slot, right? So they might not have as much space to do that, but when the number of required classes gets smaller and fewer, then they will have more room to take those classes and they can go to the Career Center. Classes are offered, that first block is first and second hour, third and fourth hour, fifth and sixth hour, or they can end their day out there, which is seventh and eighth hour. So it takes two class periods back to back to go out to the Career Center to take a class. And the good part is we will transport students ourselves or they can drive themselves if, if it's okay with you, parents. If you want your students to drive out there as a sophomore, junior, senior, that's fine, or they can just take the bus. Either way, okay? So we have great opportunities. You had a question. Yes, they do. Yep, they do. And that's a, yep, if they take the virtual classes, they can do a class out there. And remember that these are high school credit, college credit. So it's actually a Hawkeye course that they are taking. All right? Okay, so let me give you one more opportunity to hear another unique signature program only available in Waterloo Schools. Ms. Ortman, would you come up and just share just a little bit? I'll hand you the microphone. Get these people for lunch. Thank you bet. You. Thank you so much. Okay, hi crew. I know quite a few of you, so it's nice to see your faces. Real quick, how many of you are Waterloo graduates? Any of you, even around the outside of the room? Awesome, okay, quick, quick quiz. How many college classes did you have when you graduated? Do you remember? How many, three, I did two. Maybe we went to the same school. I had three classes, now we have 90. We have 90. We have 90 college options in the Waterloo schools, and that's an incredible opportunity, but it can be daunting. So one of the things I want to tell you about is the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program is the most premier pathway. It is more like graduate school than even those first two years of your college experience. So it is without a doubt for the most motivated kiddo, the kid who loves to be well-rounded. They're our go-getters. Um, for the last five years, they've been the valedictorians at both East and West. They've been the KWWL best of class. They're involved in all kinds of activities and start more, most of the organizations and do over 100 hours of service learning. So it's not just about the academic balance, it's about the well-rounded human balance. We're incredibly proud of it. Both East and West high schools last year became IB World Schools, which is um, not an easy feat. So you can look that up online and find out more about how we went through that process to have the status on a world scale. We're incredibly proud of that. And you can see the signage when you come into the foyer of both East and West high schools. So most of our graduates um, go on beyond four years. So a lot of our Kids who are thinking about a medical pathway, or you might be thinking about law, or you're thinking about international business, it's really a global-minded program. So it's beyond just the halls of Waterloo. It takes you to other parts of the world of kids who are doing the same curriculum, and IB Europe, IB Asia, 
IB North America, South America, and those credits transfer to different universities all over the world. So that's Super Premier, but how can I get there? And I want to show you in front of you, I don't have an IB table set up, but if you want to stay and ask more questions about IB or AP or any of the Hawkeye classes, those 90 courses that we have, I will be sending out a link. Um, yesterday I did a, a virtual presentation on college courses so you can know more about those 90 and those opportunities. And I'll be sharing that with families um, before Thanksgiving. We'll send that link out. But one thing I want to draw your attention to is, as Dr. Lindemann mentioned, picking the right courses in ninth grade makes a difference. So if you're thinking about being the most prepared for any of those 90 college courses by the time your son or daughter gets to 11th and 12th grades, we highly recommend they challenge themselves with an advanced high school class first and see how that feels. And again, that's, a, that's an opportunity for you to kind of feel it out and say, okay, I get there's a little bit more writing, maybe a little bit more speaking, maybe a little bit more of um, knowing how to study, and attendance is really important. So again, try that out. If your son or daughter is currently in English 9, they're already in an advanced high school class, the next step would be pre-IB English 10, followed by an AP class that they can take in 10th grade. If your son or daughter is in algebra, they're already in an advanced high school class, they should be taking pre-IB geometry next year. So you can see that pathway. And you know what? If your son or daughter is in regular English 8, take a challenge and take a pre-IB English 9 class. Take that opportunity to think and speak and maybe study it in that level so you're prepared by the time you get to 11th and 12th grade for more of those 90 college courses. All right, thanks for being here. If you have any questions about APIB or any of the Hawkeye classes, I'll stick around um, after this presentation. All right, the Waterloo Career Center and the International Baccalaureate make Waterloo schools different. They make it different and the options that you get are not available anywhere else. The last comment I'm gonna say is just to reference this, this handout that you have. On one side of the, it talks about the frequently asked questions. Would you please, your homework is that you would please take a look at all 10 of those questions. They are on there because they are the questions we get most often from parents like you. So make sure that you read that. You're gonna find questions about um, foreign language and what we recommend on that. You're gonna find questions about um, students if they, they have an IEP and have um, need some additional um, support in that way. Or, oops, sorry about that. Um, or um, English language learners uh, um, services. There's all kinds of things, even about the lunchroom and what shift they might need. So please make sure you look at that. Flip it over very quickly as we end this segment. On this other side, there are, up in the uh, upper left-hand corner of this, will you please notice that it has every counselor's name on it and their phone number. Please call them. While your students are still middle school students, they really, you need to really start with your middle school counselors. Don't call the high school counselors just yet. Start with your middle school counselors, and then once your students successfully complete eighth grade, which I know all of them will, then you're gonna start reaching out to the high school counselor. So the names and numbers are there. There's some um, questions that you might wanna ask your children. Down at the bottom, it really talks about the Infinite Campus Portal. If you have not registered, you must, you must. It is so helpful and it really does help you track those credits. As Mrs. Hildeman talked about that magic number of 11, I would suggest you write it on a piece of paper, stick it on your refrigerator, 11 credits, 11 credits, 11 credits every single year. If they don't finish their freshman year with 11 credits, they are behind. And if they do not pass a class, they do not get that credit. That's the harsh reality. You ha they, have to, they have to pass the classes to get those credits. By the time they're done with their sophomore year, they need to have 22 credits. And then 33 credits their junior year, and that will put them on track to have 44 credits. I would say a lot of freshmen actually get more than 11 credits because some might have taken something in eighth grade or they have a really full schedule, and so they may get more than 11 that first year, but 11 is the minimum. All right? So that document is meant to be a help for you. All right, so that's the tips for families. And again, call your middle school counselors. Um, that's the end of the presentation. I'm really grateful that you came. I, I made the comment right out of the gate. You made a good choice to be here because learning about some of these opportunities will help you steer your students in the right direction. So thank you so, for, so much for coming and happy regis registering. <laughs>